Okay, we're just about out of time, um, but I, I, I wanted to uh, talk about intelligent design because I, I, I've heard you um, sort of give a, a rebuttal to intelligent design, the, the stupid design, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, so we're just about out of time. Why don't you take us home with your rebuttal? So everybody watching knows what intelligent design, and it rears its head every once in a while in some form or fashion. So take us home with your sort of rebuttal on intelligent design, the stupid well, design. Well, I'm on YouTube, and they clip me talking about stupid design, but there's actually a whole preamble to that. There's like an intellectual sort of discussion uh, account that leads up to this sort of end of talk rant. <laughs> um, but I, I can go straight to the rant if go you like. Go to the rant. Uh, the, there's the argument, the intelligent design argument would commonly go something like there are things in nature that are so beautiful, so intricate, and complex in ways that defy scientific account. And there's some things that may forever defy scientific account. And the supposition is that perhaps they are intelligently designed, designed by some intelligence higher than humans. And the implied designer is God, typically, although they don't necessarily use the word God because it's trying to get it into the classroom and you can't have religion in the classroom. So if you say God, then it's religion. Say so intelligent design is kind of a backdoor way to do this. Well, first of all, if you're celebrating what it is you don't understand and crediting an intelligence to it, then you're, you're seeding any understanding of that. Well, first it's audacious because you're saying, not only can I, I not understand this, neither can you. Neither can any one of my colleagues in the world today, neither can anyone who will ever be born. Well, the hubris of that, just because you can't figure it out, nobody who will come after you will be able to figure it out, excuse me? Can we give us some, a little bit of credit here for like, maybe you're not smart enough to figure it out? You know, uh, maybe. And so the, so that's first, the hubris of that. Uh, it doesn't allow the possibility that someone cleverer than you will be born after you who right. will actually solve it. And if you're gonna celebrate the ignorance of this phenomenon, human ignorance of how it works, Okay, I don't have a problem with that. Just don't call it science. Call it call it theology. Call it philosophy, call it whatever. But science is is science is an enterprise of discovery. And intelligent design is an enterprise of ignorance. There is no discovery that comes out of it. If you're going to say I don't understand it, God did it, then you just go on to the next problem. So whatever you want to call it, it's simply not science. And so unlike others who say, get it out of the school, get it, I, I don't care if it even stays in the school. It just doesn't belong in the science classroom because it's not science, because science discovers things. Now, there's a softer version of intelligent design, which I don't have an issue with. There are religious people out there, religious scientists even, who say they're just discovering God's world. And okay. Let's go have a beer. You know, I'm done. Okay. And they're intrigued by the mysteries of the universe. And if those are God's mysteries, and it gets them to want to discover it because they get closer to God, okay. As long as whatever you do, you end up making discoveries, fine. I'll invite you into the science classroom. Intelligent design is just not one of those philosophies. <laughs> so, and I said, if you want to talk about the things that defy understanding, and that you marvel at, then in all fairness, you should make the list of things that are kind of stupid in their design, like all the things that want to kill us. Whatever is the design of the earth, human health and longevity could not have possibly been a priority. <laughs> okay, so shall we call that stupid design or intelligent design that doesn't care about us? Pick one, because one of, one of those two is going on here. Uh, you know, you look at the fact that in one linear centimeter of your lower colon lives and works more bacteria than the total number of people who have ever been born. And we want to believe we're somehow in control of the world. We are hosts for bacteria, as far as they're concerned. That's what's going on there. And other things, you know, uh, 
There are people who choke to death each year. That's just bad design. You eat, breathe, drink, all through the same hole in your body, <laughs> guaranteeing that some percentage of us are going to choke to death every single year. You, if you lose your leg, no, you don't grow a new leg. That'd be kind of cool if we did. <laughs> we don't. Chameleons grow a new leg. All right? What Am I asking for too much here? All right? If humans are something special in the world, give, give me the new leg. All right? Come on. All right? Make another hole for me to breathe in. Dolphins breathe out of a different hole from which they eat. Dolphins never choked on a chicken sandwich, okay? <laughs> because they're breathing through a different hole in their body. I'm not, you know, this is not a hard request. They already exist in the animal kingdom. So, anyhow. And then, of course, there's like what's going on between our legs. That's the, the famous one, you know? Here you have a sewage system in the middle of an entertainment complex. There they are! No engineer would design that, ever. Ever. That's just bad design. So, so while you make your list of all that is majestic and beautiful in the world, and I'll even agree with a lot of what's on that list, don't sweep under the rug the things that are just stupid design, otherwise you're delusionally interpreting the world around you. And that is one of the great challenges that the investigator of the world faces. <laughs> are, are you unbiased in how you look at what the world is telling you? And to the extent that you are, reveals the fact that you want a world that makes you feel good rather than the world that is. And therein, I think, is the problem with most of humans in the world today. Dr. Tyson, thank you for coming All by. All right, thanks for having me. Don't ever get used to being alive. Uh, that, well, I, I Dr. Never. Neil deGrasse Tyson, everybody. <laughs> um, and that just uh, is gonna wrap it up for today. Um, you can see uh, episodes and clips of Dr. Tyson's program, the NOVA program, Science Now, on pbs.org. Uh, don't forget to go to your local bookstore or Amazon and buy every single one of his books and read them until your eyes are bleeding. That's what all the ki cool kids are doing these days. There's also the library. If and you know. the library. No, can't forget the library. And uh, also, don't forget to stop by Skepchick.org and hang out with me and all my crazy cohorts there. It's a group of uh, brilliant, intelligent, beautiful women, and they're fighting the good fight for critical thinking and science every single day. And, so when uh, was your sex change? That <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the token. Is all it's, it's, I'm the pool boy around there. That's right. uh, but stop by skeptic.org <laughs> and hang That's out with us Because of what you wear there. if you're the pool boy. Yeah. <laughs> For Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm Sam Ogden saying enjoy the rest of your day. Be good to each other. Mm -hmm.